up, I rob your ass on camera, nigga better ask about That's me. About nigga, I take your chain, bitch. bitch. Nigga, I take your main, bitch. bitch you they still can't zoom. I think my computer's fucking dying on me, but Bobby Lee, little do we know, is a master of the strings. No, I turned this on, I was like, you know, a fucking, I was like, yikes, okay. The smell, the smell from just that crease alone would peel your fucking nose right off. But sometimes, like, you know, some of the most fucking unbelievable things can, you know, occur with the most unrealistic people. So I don't really have a lot of time to fuck around and, you know, show you the fun things that I've been exploring on the net. We gotta hop into this Jeff Wittick stuff. So a while ago, like I was saying, Jeff Wittick's heart was uh, just pierced with, uh, you know, sadness, okay? He was struck, you know, with a couple nasty words by somebody that I think was his hero, okay? Andrew Schultz is a comedian. He's part of the, the comedy universe, okay? He's a Joe Roganite. Massive comedian selling out fucking shows left and right. And, uh, you know, friend of Andrew, Jeff Wittick, got tarnished by him. You know, a while ago, Andrew Schultz was on his uh, Patreon Okay, he you know he dropped one of his episodes on his Patreon podcast, and it's just a, it's just I would assume it's a scam. Like a lot of these people have these Patreons, they give you one more extra episode, and people eat it up. You know, if it's somebody that they're really into, they're fucking gonna be clicking and you know paying for that shit. They got to get all the content they can get. Okay, but I understand it. You know, I mean, I I, I pay for every fucking platform known to man. And I don't watch anything. I got Hulu, I got the Netflix, I got HBO Max. I don't touch it. Okay, I get on my I get on my TV, I turn on YouTube. And I stare at useless drama until my eyes hurt. So uh Andrew Schultz released the text messages. He he uh he trashed, he tarnished Jeff about his eye. He pretty much just said on his show that like, you know, grow up. Your eye is finished, okay? Either take it out or kill yourself. That's not what he said, but he did he did he did kind of fucking tear his heart in two. Just being being like, dude, I'm tired of seeing on my feed you talking about your eye. Enough with the fucking eye. Hello, Candy Cane. I went to your chance. Sometimes I do a little thing called exploring. I can only see so many people that subscribe. The only way that you know I know that you're subscribed is if you show your uh subscriptions. Okay. And I saw, you know, Candy Cane, I went to your I went to your channel. You got 24k subscribers. <sighs> Send them my way. Okay, back to this. Um but Jeff Wittick, you know, after that event happened, you know, he started to get he started to get heated. He it actually caused him to spiral so much he had to go hang out with mom, okay? Mom in New York City or Staten Island or one of these shithole country or uh, cities of the world. Jeff would spiraled so much after this drama, after being made fun of, you know, by millions, that he decided to make it worse by, uh, you know, f feeding into uh, the hype, the hype of uh, the fight. So here's his, un here's his leaked text messages. This is Jeff Wittick's unhinged text, Andrew Schultz addressing the beef. So as you can see, all, the, all this blue right here is fucking... Man. Jeff Wittick! All right, so let's get some fucking music on for this. Where the fuck is it? There it is. So after the events happened, Jeff got caught up in his head, pissed off. Okay, he's like, he's not going to go down like that. He's a, he's a thug. Or he's not really a thug. He's like one of these wise guys. A lot of these Italian people that have a, you know... A little bit of height in them. They get that juice, that liquid courage. Okay? You know, even if you spent your your weekend in the clink, you feel like you have this code of honor where you can't be trashed on, okay? You gotta fight the person, okay? You gotta fucking take them out. You're not gonna look like a bitch. So, uh... Jeff Wittick sent him a slew of text messages. Here's the first one. It says, yo, it's your worst nightmare. Can't act like you don't see this one. Your own friends don't even like you. LOL. It was easy to get your number, which is like fucking scary as fuck. Actually, it's not. You know, 
Anybody can have my number. I'm not picking it up, bitch. I never pick up anything that I don't know. I look at it, and I set it down. Because I think it's collections. So that's not really a fear to me, but... uh. He goes on, he says, and it wasn't Mike, if that's what you were thinking. Which is scary, I mean, and then who was it? I mean, as if, like, Andrew Schultz is like, who gave out my fucking number? And numbers are everywhere. If you're a celebrity, your number's out there, your address, where you sleep, your blueprints of your house. The way to get in. It's all out there. Public information. So, he told me, he said it wasn't Mike, it was someone closer to him. He goes on to say, I'm going to embarrass you or sabotage you and take myself down with you to show you how stupid I really am. You got a lot of, you got a lot of ops and you just got a lot more from that dumbass Patreon video. And don't take this as a, you know, a kiss on the lips. You know, imagine that, you know, I think Jeff Wittick was fucking heavily tongue tangling with him somewhere okay this is like girlfriend stuff right you know, when you get this salty and emotional about something I'm just thinking these two had a fucking fucking word kissing kissing on the side had like a little relationship going on here this is uh it's very emotional you know if, it, if I've ever had any problem in my life they just come and knock on my door they kill me there's only been a few fucking things that I've had happen to me where, like, you know, I don't know, somebody was mad at me. They always show up. There's not a lot of this spiral, as uh, Anna says, Jeff is spiraling. Australia girl got lucky. She got out when she did. And that's true. You know, Ethan Klein, he's opening this door. Ethan Klein of uh, the Ethan Klein universe is really starting to kind of, like, step back from the universe he created not too long ago. He's had enough. He's gambling. He's promoting gambling. He's gone. He's about to go gambling for the third time. Publicly. Poker. One of the worst types of gambling. I go to the casino sometimes. I see people outside eating their own fucking fingers off their body. Because they made a mistake. They spent all their money. They're hungrier than hell because of the position they got themselves in from the gambling. It's a problem. And I and I find it fascinating that Ethan Klein is over here embracing all these new people in his life. He's got Mike Malgic. It's his new buddy. Jeff Wittick. But it's stuff like this. You know, leaked text messages kind of like let you know what we're dealing with. This is probably what Tana Monjo deals with. You know, him and Tana Monjo had a little thing together. Okay, I'm sure that they were kissing making the sweet smooch and I could see this this type of shit happening between them you know if you're this mad about somebody talking about your eyeball and don't take this as a texting an ex-girlfriend this is just texting from somebody who wants to send a message I'm putting out your kill shot this week so he's gonna he's pretty much threatening him threatening Jeff said uh, or Andrew said good evening Hello, Andrew. Now tell me why you did what you did. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. This is like bitch shit. Like, when I see something like this, when, when he's... Now tell me why you did it. This is like, he's fucking crying at this moment. His phone is covered with tears. He said, when we first met in the fight in Manchester, you said you wanted me to move back to New York. Why would you even say that? said you wanted me to move back to New York. I said if I came, it would be all over your fucking face. FBI, open up! And he said, go on. Sounds about right. And then he said, you stood me up for our barbershop episode. But I was nice enough to say, good, good God, good golly. I gave you tickets. Oh, wait, there's another part. Uh, but what you did excuses none of this. No periods allowed. You know, I, I, you can tell when somebody's pissed when they... I never in my life have I ever thought about taking a risk by not spelling you all the way. Just the, the single letters. Very uh, displeasing to see, you know, with your eyes, you know, if you care about that. Uh, he said, I gave you tickets to my show in Manchester, invited you backstage. It was nice to see you. 
because I thought you really wanted to sit on my lap. Okay, I want to do creative stuff with you. Hang low over your face, drip a couple drops in your mouth, a couple pieces of fruit. Imagine that. Imagine Andrew Schultz dripping or just dropping grapes down, you know, Jeff Wittick's throat. But uh, he said not low-hanging fruit drama for clicks. Wi-Fi here is shit. Not sure if it's going to go through. I'm getting to the point. It ain't low-hanging fruit drama. That's my life. What you said hurt. Are you fucking kidding me? Imagine if, like, I don't know, you lost a finger or Jeff Wittick lost a finger or just, like, the tip of it. Because that's kind of, like, how I think about the eye situation. I'm looking at a man that has no mark. I'm sure he's, you know, a lot of people, they, they tell you shit and you believe it. I mean... I guess he's gone over a thousand surgeries, hundreds of sur What are they doing? You know, when I think about people going under the knife with their eye, eventually it's just going to fucking rot out the optic nerve. Can't handle more of the surgical blade and the pulling out of it, right? You know, that's a very intense operation. But ever since the, the David Dobrik stuff, Jeff Wittick's been on like a tyrant, okay? He's about to cash a check, get a huge settlement for being slammed into a crane. But ever since then, he's just like fucking been on that eye. It caused him so much drama that he said in his podcast when he came back, he had a fucking seizure in the middle of the night. Andrew Schultz caused him to have a nightmare that made him fall out of bed and have a fucking seizure. I don't buy it, dude. That's a fucking lie. And then I'm on the, you know, I was on the, the breakfast, lunch, and dinner group, the BBG, the Mike David uh, Facebook group. I saw somebody post something from one of Jeff Wittick's podcasts when he's sitting in the fucking the pond or whatever it was, the 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 jacuzzi with Tana. He's going on about this crazy like coming to God story. How I found God. Okay. Real nice. Okay. And like there's nothing wrong with finding God, but you know, whenever people tell me these insane stories that they saw him, it's getting out of hand. It's getting out of hand. Coffee says, definitely some passion there. There is. Uh, so it just goes on. There's a lot of fucking, you know, bullshit. Andrew's the only one that sits here and still looks like a bitch. Okay, if I was Andrew, I'd be like, come to my house, and I would have brass knuckles, I'd have bricks, I'd, I'd hire a crew. We'd make them disappear. Uh, but he says, uh, after I was kind to you, I said I wanted to help. You went, 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 uh, Fuck, you went on my friend's... Chris's podcast has said a bullshit lie from a comedy hate channel, which I'm, I'm curious about this. I don't know what podcast Jeff's talking about. So Andrew's actually got some fucking, he's actually got some like, you know, beef with Jeff that kind of caused him to, uh, you know, go, you know, public with uh, making fun of his eye situation. There is some tension behind this. There is actually a motive. So it wasn't like some like, I don't know, just out of nowhere, Andrew Schultz shenanigans where he's like, you know what? I'm tired of fucking Jeff Wittick. And he forgot to cut the scene out on the podcast. He left it in there for a reason, right? To stir some hype. Because Flagrant 2, I mean, if we go to that channel, it's trash. Okay? It's a lapel show. Big Tuna says, yes, bro, love the new setup. I'm actually getting disgusted by it. I want to do a uh, ripping everything down show. It's starting fresh. Just kidding. But it will. It is starting to fall apart already. I'm like, oh, Christ. And that's what happens, man. Whenever you just fucking build something within a couple days and you're like, well, that will do. No, it won't. Okay? Things are not stable here. I've already had one piece fall down during the show. Let's go to un uh, flagrant. I just kind of want to look at the numbers. I, it's it, it really helps to see if, like, you know, things are farm drama farming. Okay? You know, in the world of WWE. I know all about you too, oh, man. shit. Okay, they have this thing called, uh, what is it called? A mark? Or a, uh, what, what is that word for whenever you're, uh, kayfabe? Or what fucking kayfabe? And I still don't know what that means. Kayfabe. But I think it's like, you know, when you create fake hype and it's just, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's all theater to me. Drama. And drama sells. But the numbers are pretty good. They're, they're. Fucking destroying, demolishing the numbers of uh, Jeff Wittick's show. So I, I, you know, it doesn't really, it wouldn't make any sense that, you know, he would create this drama to, I don't know, bring more eyes on the show, bring more heat. The numbers aren't too bad. I mean, this is like kind of like an impulsive show. You know, impulsive has like these normal, normal fucking, 
you know, level ground of numbers that they usually hit. Like, you know, this is probably a normal for him, 562K. Then the millions are like the ones when they have these special guests. It's, it's a lot like Impulsive. These types of shows won't last because they're literally only based upon uh, the person they have come sit with them on the show. Interview shows, they run out of juice because eventually everybody's going to die and they're going to get real old or they're just not going to want to come on your show anymore. You only have so many celebrities that want to you know, fuck with you until you run out of them. No, Andrew Schultz has probably got a lot of enemies out here, and he's got a lot of episodes. I mean, how many more people can we have come on this show before it runs dry, and you got to do the show with your friends? All right, let's uh, move on. I'm done with that. I mean, I think the, the this text exchange doesn't really go anywhere. Jeff, you know, he's mad at Jeff because uh, he was talking about, or he said some lie. Jeff made, or said a lie, allegedly on a podcast about Je uh, Andrew Schultz. So he's salty about that. Jeff was like, it was a joke. And then Jeff hits him back with that warrants you to make fun of my life. Lifelong injuries. Okay. I mean, can we, uh, can we, I don't know. I, I just, I really would like to fucking get a closer look at Jeff's eye. Before you make that, it's like that lady that said she can only walk backwards for the rest of her life. That was a lie. When I'm watching somebody with two peepers that blank and they're working like they should, to me, you're fine. And if not, you get over it. There's a lot of shit out here that fucking can happen to you that, you know, you're lucky hasn't happened to you. So that's pretty pathetic. Here's Jeff right Do now. Do you regret beefing? I just kind of wanted to click on this and see if you know, what he looks like, if he's still drugged. With Alyssa Violet. Parents would get arrested, you know, if they abuse their child, but you needed it, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff's crying, okay? And his mom, is that his mom? I don't know if it's his mom. So this is like his last episode. I don't think he's done an episode since, you know, the text release. He's fucking geeked right now. Look at this motherfucker. Higher than fuck. Drug bag. Oh, shit. When I see stuff like this right here, if you're carrying around a little pouch, you got paraphernalia in there. So when this stuff was happening, Jeff was hopping on every show to, like, kind of fucking bring hype and uh, make known his beef, okay? Being as loud as he can, as dramatic as he can, okay? And just letting people know that, like, he's salty at Andrew. He wanted the word to be spread. But when he was hopping on these shows, he was fucking slurring. His mouth sounded like it was full of cotton balls. And, uh, you know, I think that, like, it, it caused him to spiral and get into having a good time. Do you regret beefing with Alyssa? But I could be lying. You know, sometimes I just make things up and, you know, I hope for the best. And I'm usually never wrong, so it doesn't matter. Dumb butt. I am. So here's Tana looking fucking terrible right now with these boots on. Pretty good stuff. I'm so happy to be here. I'm, I'm happy. Oh, she's H2BH. Happy to have you, you honestly. amazing. I really like this shirt. Thank you. I it's feel really I shirt. feel good. It's I felt terrible this whole summer. I've had a really rough summer. Uh, you have not Oh my god. So I bet Jeff, you know, with all that shit we just saw, he is a very, like, emotional person. I feel like this entire time he was calling Tana crying. Asking her if she could take a flight to give him a hug. I haven't done any episodes of Jeff FM this whole summer. I know. You and I, our schedules have been, like, so opposite. Even right now, I was just in Vegas all weekend and you leave for Vegas. I don't care. So we're not going to watch this. 